Hi! So, I know this is the third time that I'll be talking to you about The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, but I really like the book, so... So welcome to the rest of the video if you don't mind that. And what I want the video to be about is Salander in the book versus Salander in the US movie. But before we get there, I kind of want to explain why I fell in love with the character in the book and so that I can explain why I disagree with a lot of what happened in the movie. And the reason that I felt like I had to make this video is because I've turned out to be an unreliable narrator and I've accepted it, but I need to write my last wrong. My last video kind of made it seem like the movie was perfect and I don't think it's perfect at all. I have a lot of issues, but I'm just gonna talk about one today. So here we go. There are obviously gonna be a lot of spoilers in this video and if you don't mind that then I don't get you, but you're welcome to stay. Most of the female characters that I experienced as I grew up watching movies, TV shows, reading books, they have something wrong with them. Like most of the time if you're beautiful or you have a hot body, you're most likely dumb or you just want to have babies and get married and have a husband or boyfriend or whatever. Or if you're smart, you're most likely ugly or like weird or like if you're like more out there then you're deemed as crazy or like something's wrong with you psychologically so obviously you don't want to be any of those things growing up and you can't see yourself in something else because they're like terrible <laughs> and the first time i read this book it was like the first time i saw a really flawed character but her flaws made her powerful and that's really what makes us all powerful like all the people we like we like them because they're their weird self and it's the ways that we are not like others and that we feel those ways in which we can surpass others. We wouldn't have those without all the stuff we lack. Like, they're kind of built against each other, I kind of feel like. And this was the first time that a female character ever gave me that idea. And I didn't know anything about feminism, nobody ever talked to me about that in real life. I never experienced those ideas. I only had men to look up to and only men could be badass and be flawed and still like you you like them and it was cool to like them. When you begin reading this book, you don't know if she's evil, you don't know what's wrong with her, is there something wrong with her, am I supposed to like her? But then you do like her and I don't know, those ideas have never occurred to me that you as a girl can be as weird as you want to and people will still like you for being your own kind of version of female. Like, and this, this book doesn't really like spell that out for you, but that's an idea that it transmitted to me and I think a lot of people are getting that kind of idea from Salander. And the reason it did not translate to the movie, first of all, we don't have a narrator, so we're not hearing a lot of the inner, like, the reasons why Salander behaves the, the way that she does. We don't hear her reasoning any time in the movie, like, not the way that we do in the book, right? But that um, is that just the medium do we need a narrator i don't know and like i said in my last video like aesthetically rooney mar is so perfect as lisbeth salander i love her i think they did a great job on that but beyond the aesthetics they completely changed salander and they like they changed her um for example they made her submissive in all of the sexual scenes and in the book it's like a big deal they make a big deal as to why she's dominant in sexual encounters and it's like, on, in the overall storyline, that doesn't really matter. But little things like that is what make her a powerful character, a character that you've never read or experienced before. And so the movie was like watering it down, basically. The last scene when Salander gives that jacket to Mikhail, like, I don't think that even happens in the book. Like, this is not, we're not after like the romance part of the storyline, like, whatever but the biggest betrayal to the book was that scene where salander asked mikhail for permission to kill the guy like oh that scene was the most inauthentic salander scene in the entire movie because the whole point of the character is that she's unpredictable and nobody can understand her reasoning because she doesn't answer to anybody else except her own moral code and so when she turns around to mikhail and asks if she can kill this guy i mean you just you just murdered, betrayed the, the soul of the character that was Lisbeth. 
Salander. And the most disappointing thing about the movie is that the guy that directed this is the guy that directed Fight Club. And for me, Fight Club was like the first movie that really took me to weird places, like taboo ideas and experiences. And and yeah, they make you uncomfortable, but you experience it through the eye of the of the film. And it was just so sad that this guy that can take you to totally weird places what for whatever reason this movie couldn't get there it couldn't really get to where the book went all the way like they did a good job on the surface like yeah they did the rape scenes and maybe they even went a little overboard with the rape scenes and but that's the book and that was cool because they totally reflected the book but they did not reflect Solander and like that was the biggest thing about the book like nobody cares about the storyline we care about Solander because she was so powerful she is so powerful <sighs> whatever anyway thank you for watching if you still are and I promise next week's video will not be about the girl with the dragon tattoo you probably know me by now goodbye <laughs>